but one never knows. I do also enjoy Wait. Wait, I have to there we go. Okay. Well, I'm way over here. I don't know that I can get around really. So I best I guess all we can do is kind of jump and pray. There we go. We made it up. We are now potentially in the cistern. Welcome back, Melouette. How was your lurk? How were your adventures? Oh no. Italian plumber achievement unlocked. Thank you for that game. Uh, this is a horrible time. We have a captive here. You, who are you? Did he send you? I'm Churney, and nobody sent me. Thank you know you're here. You have to help me escape before that monster comes back. What's going on here? I'm Centilla. I found a way out through the gate of Horn, but it's locked. So I told him about it, and instead of helping me escape, he locked me up. He wants to keep us all here forever. Or until we're turned to gold. He's a monster. You have to let me go so we can kill him and take his key. Who? Who did this to you? Sentius, my adoptive father. Furies help me. I'll castrate and crucify him. How hasn't this broken the golden rule? He said the gods are on his side because they don't want us to escape either. Where is the way out? Behind me. There's an aqueduct tunnel bringing water from outside the city, so it should lead us outside. The only problem is it's barred by a heavy locked gate, and he has the only key. What will you do if I release you? I'm going to take that key from around his neck. Even if it means cutting his throat to get it. I'm done caring about the golden rule. I just want out. Help me, and we can escape together. Well, she's going to set off the golden rule, so... What about the others? There won't be enough time. Just you and me. What do you say? I'm sorry if I let you go, everyone else is going to die. What if I round everyone up so they're ready to escape once the golden rule is broken? I'm letting you go. Let's get out of here together. Uh, what if I round everyone up? <laughs> yes. For anyone who does not have context on this, uh, that is... That is the hubby. Mortonic and Tipsy Tiger are... The people. The married people. Uh, yeah. Sentius is a jerk face. And he's a stoic, so, like, you never would have known that he's the bad guy, but everybody who's here has been a bad person in one way or another. They have all done horrible things. Um, so, like, I'm not really surprised. What if I round everyone up so they're ready to escape once the golden rule is broken? There's no time! Wait, did you hear that? He's here. Quick, you have to let me go. It's now or never. I'm letting you go. Let's get out of oh, here together. Thank you. Now follow... Wait. Did you hear that? He's here. He must be coming in through the door behind me. You distract him. Stay right here and keep him talking while I look for something I can use. Oh, he does actually show up. What did you do with Centilla? Where is she? As if I'd tell you. you. You're human garbage, you know that? 
Uh, I mean, you're human garbage. You know that. So that is how it's going to be. Oh well, this doesn't change anything for me. It's a shame, really. If you'd just done what you were supposed to, you'd have been looping through time forever until you gave up and killed yourself, just like that soft-hearted pleb, Al. <laughs> you remember Al? Wait, what? Uh, you remember Al? Come now. Surely you didn't think you were the only one here who remembered everything. You see, my connection to the portal somehow preserves my memories from one loop to the next. Whether that was Proserpina's intention or a happy accident, I'll never know. But I'm surprised you hadn't noticed. Here I was, thinking you're a little bit sharper than Al was. Or perhaps you're just more willing to break the rules. He was a moralistic fellow, never once compromised on his principles. And because of that fatal flaw, he relived this day many thousands of times before we finally had this conversation. I watched him come through the portal each time, always a little older, a little more disheveled, a little more haunted. And when he finally saw the futility of it all, as you're about to, it broke him. He drank a jug of wine, tied a noose around his neck, and took his own life just before he was shot with a golden arrow. The next time I awoke, you showed up. But you, you've caught up to where he was so quickly. I'd have preferred if you'd given me more time to enjoy the trappings of my success. How many extra days did you give me? Just the four? Not many. But don't worry, I'm sure there'll be another useful idiot who comes along after you're dead. In any case, there's no escape for you except the path that Al took, the path he wrote about on his tablet. What was it? Ah, yes. Better to end it all now than find out what awaits you beyond that portal. So, you discovered my secret. So what? What are you going to do about it? So you asked me to figure out who was going to break the golden rule, knowing I would fail every time. You knew there was a way out, and even locked up your own daughter to keep it secret. Why? You're going to die a painful death for this. So, you asked me to figure out who was going to break the golden rule, knowing I would fail every time? Of course. There's no way you could have succeeded. Every soul who has ever found themselves here has broken the golden rule eventually. It is inevitable. Man will always sin sooner or later. Any idiot could tell you this. But where others might see tragedy, I saw opportunity. As I told you the first time we met, I found a way to cheat death. By reliving the same day over and over again forever. And I will continue living long after your dust. You knew there was a way out, and even locked up your own daughter to keep it a secret. Why? Why? Isn't it obvious? Because I have grown attached to all this. My title, my beautiful villa, the sun on my face, the music of birds chirping. And as long as this day keeps repeating itself, I get to enjoy it all, over and over again, for eternity. Don't you see? I have found a way to prolong my life indefinitely, to cheat death. I have become, in effect, as immortal as the gods. Can you honestly say you would not wish the same for yourself? Yeah, Scintilla is right there. And he'd be okay with living over and over the same day if it meant he lived forever. Yeah. Um... Here's a little point of interest, though. It's Sentius that casts the... the ritual that opens the portal and allows us to loop. So... If he's dead, the ritual doesn't get cast. Let's see you cheat your way out of this. 
Do you really think you can take on a Decurion with that flimsy little bow? I mean, probably. I probably could, but I'm going to let her have this one. Who? Centilla? Where is she? I'm right here, father. Oh, jeez! Oh, jeez! No! God! Ah! The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. Come on, we have to go. Hey, what's happening to you? That light, it, it's so bright. There's the time paradox, okay. Point of origin. Talk to Al. Uh, hi there. Gave me a bit of a fray. Thought I was in here alone. I'm Al. Al Worth? I came in here to find you. Well, here I am. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Uh, I'm Cherny, or I'm Cherny. I was hoping that you'd know who I am. This might be Al's first loop. This might be Al's first loop. I'm Cherny. Really? That's strange. I was just reading an old tablet I found here. Well, trying. My Latin is kind of rusty. But the last entry mentioned someone with the same name. It described an event about 2,000 years ago. Someone with your name appeared in the city out of the shrine of Proserpina. Freed an imprisoned woman named Santilla, who then murdered her captor, breaking some kind of ancient law. It said the attack caused golden statues to come alive, hunting down everyone in the city and turning them into gold. Apparently, the only person to survive was Santilla, while the stranger disappeared in a flash of light. Actually, that was me. Uh, what? You're saying you were here 2,000 years ago. I... I'm not sure I understand. When I first arrived here, in the present day, I found your corpse hanging from a noose. Uh, I'm sorry, come again? I still have the suicide note you carved into this tablet. Here. Um, let me see that. God, why does this writing look so familiar? I've spent a lifetime in this place going around and around in circles. This is... Oh, this is disturbing. But I don't understand how I could have written it. It was written by a different version of you. I changed the past. And your fate. I... Uh, I'm not following. I helped Sintilla kill the man who opened a time portal and drew you back in time, preventing it from ever happening. So you're saying, because a man from 2,000 years ago is dead, he never created a time portal, so I never went through it, and that's why I don't remember any of this. Now you're getting it. I guess you saved my life then as well as helping that poor woman to escape. That's a lot to take in. Enough talk. How about we get out of this place? Maybe we can escape through the same aqueduct Santilla used, if we can find it. It's right here in the cistern. Follow me. So we still have a ton of things that we can do in this time. Like, by no means have we gotten a hundred percent on this game but we were able to finally create a time paradox so at the very least we were able to in some fashion return to our time I'm gonna pause here for a moment and make sure nobody else has ever lured into this temple Good idea. You go on ahead. I'll be there soon. That makes sense that there are four separate endings to the game. It looks all bright and shiny here. You're back. But 
you're alone. Does that mean you didn't find Al? I found him. He'll be here in a moment. Oh, what a relief. Thank you so much. I was beginning to think you'd both become trapped in there. Why don't you tell me what you discovered while we wait? I discovered your real name is Charon. Ah, I see. I thought you might. Well, now you know. I suppose you have questions. Who are you, really? You can just call me Charon, if you like. I am sorry I was not completely honest with you when we first met. I do not enjoy deceiving people. Believe me, I do not. But I have learned from 5,000 years of experience. That most people find comfort in familiarity, in gradual change, and coming to see the truth in their own time. What truth is that? That you died, of course. You were dead when I brought you here. My role, as the servant of the god of the underworld, has always been to assist the chosen I goes down. to cross the threshold from the land of the Thank you for the lurk. to the land of the dead. How did I die? Hmm. Usually, when people do not remember how they died, it is because they suffered a terrible trauma. Most souls would rather not remember. Ask yourself honestly, do you really want to know? I suppose not. A wise decision. All you need to know is that you and Al died in possession of a sacred silver coin. What's so special about these coins? Perhaps you have heard the tales of the Greeks and Romans bearing their dead with a coin in their mouths to pay the ferrymen for passage across the river. Well, those stories contained a seed of truth. But not any coin would do. A long time ago, my master created a thousand silver coins and had me distribute them across the world. My orders were simple. Whenever a person died in possession of a coin, I was to locate them and ferry them here. Why? That is a question you would have to ask him, if that were still possible. In light of the path you have chosen, I am just his servant, doing his bidding. Only now, I find myself bereft of purpose. You see, the coins on you and Al were the last of the thousand in existence. There is nobody else to ferry here. Nobody to keep you company. After five thousand years, the underworld has finally run its course. Interesting. Interesting. Can you return us to the land of the living? I see no point in keeping you here. But I have to ask one thing. That you keep this to yourself. Look! Here comes Al now! Al! It's so good to see you. You were gone so long I thought I'd never see you again. Kinda lost track of time in there. You wouldn't believe what we found. The ruins of a long-forgotten city. And there was a tablet describing an event 2,000 years ago. Supposedly, the city was destroyed when a woman murdered a tyrant with the help of... Well, my new friend here. I know how crazy that sounds. Maybe not that crazy. That woman. I don't suppose her name was... Centilla? How could you... What? She left a tablet of her own. I stumbled across it while I was waiting here. I think she meant for you to read it. Here, take a look. I don't know what became of you, or if you'll ever read this, but I want you to know that I will never forget you, or what you did for me. It pains me that so many dear friends were not so fortunate. Olcus, Sentia, Lucretia, Horatius, Galerius, poor Dooley. And the others but please understand their blood is on my hands not yours i will live with the consequences of my actions and all i can do is move forward trying to show others the same compassion you showed me 
I promise you that saving my life will not be for nothing. Centilla. Sounds like you meant a lot to her. I'd love to hear your story, but first, you two look exhausted. Why don't you hop in my boat and rest while I ferry you back to civilization? <laughs> Sounds good to me. And you? Are you ready to go home? All right, Karen. Ferry us home. The one that got away. Ending two of four. Very cool. Very cool. So, we've got one of the branch endings. Which is pretty excellent here. We've got some credits. Because we found one of the endings. This music is amazing. This is a soundtrack I would actually really enjoy. However... I'm not going to run all the way through the credits right now. Alright, can I continue this game? I'm tempted to start entirely over. To see if that helps. Oh, we continue from the cistern. That's not helpful. Um, I wonder if we can just not talk to her? And potentially be able to, like, pass through. Which is a horrible time! Oh, right, we don't have a key. So we can't actually do anything. Ah! That was so most terrifying. Um, although. Good. We, we can safely just drop into the water. That's useful. Because if we start the dialogue with Centilla, we are going to end up having to go through that whole interaction. So. I know. I know you can't move. Even though you do move. Oh, hey! I wonder where this is. That's a way to get in here. Yes, we are back. So we are starting from... We are starting from basically right before we talked to Centilla. I wonder if we went to like Horatius and we were like, Centilla is in the... the cistern. If we could get her out of there without tripping the event. How do I get out of here? I've forgotten how to get out of here. This guy. This golden statue that's in my way. Equitia out here somewhere? I know. 
So you survived the system. Mariolus isn't receiving visitors at the moment. I it know. It'd be an election day. Do you know anything about Centilla's disappearance? Listen, I don't abduct women. They come to me. And they keep coming back. If you know what I mean. Yes, subtle, but I think you know what I mean. I need to sp speak with Ulpius. He's not here. Where is he? Dunno. The little cap at murder escaped earlier this morning while I was taking Yulia to the clinic. He can't have gone far, but if you find him, tell him the punishment he gets for coming back on his own won't be as bad as if I have to go looking for him. Great. I'll be going now. Whatever. Just remember, I'll be watching. Yes. I'm I'm very worried about that, sir. Um the light is getting low again, which means that things are moving towards Aresius. What now? Um, what can you tell me about the magistrate? Do you know of a way out of here? Who are you going to vote for? Okay, right. I can't. Uh, Please keep an eye out for anything that might lead us to Centella. I can't tell Horatius about Centella, which is frustrating. We still are waiting for the next loop. Because we need to talk to what's her face about Maliolus so that we can get Maliolus to drop out of the race. What else can we do here? Look, I freed Scintilla and everything went crazy. Yes. So, Purple Kara, we found... We found one of the endings just just now. I guess we didn't go to speak to Georgius. The priestess, yes. Where is she? Well, I don't know where to find her if she's not standing here in the square. Hmm, a golden bowl. Just like Apollo and Diana's. Sorry, I'm still a bit out of it. Galerius just saved my life. Was there something you wanted? Lucretia says I'm supposed to rest. Uh, I'll be going. All right. Now. Goodbye. Uh, ooh, Neva's treatment notes. Rhubarb, gentine, Locosora, aloe, willow bark. Well, that would have been useful to us before, but we already solved that problem. Welcome. Let's talk to him about the plaque. Hello again, my sartorial friend. What is on your mind? Yes, so we we created the the paradox. In the city full of Romans, you are asking me. 
because I am Greek, let me tell you something about Greeks and Romans. My name is Georgios, yes. Tipsy but Tiger. The Romans, they do not care. They hear me say Georgios and they think, ah, he must mean Georgius. Good Roman name. They do this all we the might time. Be, we might be out of spoiler territory, Jews, so... They copy us, but call him Jupiter. They take Hades and call him Pluto, Persephone, Proserpina. I am in case somebody missed it and they yes, don't want any spoilers. They change the names? Do they want credit for making it all up? Do they want to forget where it came from? At first, I pull my hair out. After a while, I give up and I become Georgius the Roman. I accept... Hi, psychotic dear. Plus, I have no hair left to pull. But my point is this. If you want to know who stole an old Greek name, look no further than the sticky-fingered Romans. The plague you seek was pilfered from a collection of old Greek relics by none other than Yes, me. the food arrived a while ago. He Thank you very much. It. Like a typical Roman, he likes shiny things, especially those that once belonged to my people. And besides, it makes him happy. So I say, let him keep it. I believe he still has it with him, in his cell, just opposite the Temple of Demeter. Alright, I'll be going. I hope that our paths cross again soon, my friend. Do, 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 do. Um, oh, there she is. It came back. Excellent. That's quite an impressive bow you have there. Just like Diana's. A new face. Ave, and may Vesta watch over you. I'm Equitia. To what do I owe the pleasure of this visit? Can I ask you some questions about escaping the underworld? It's very forward of us. Uh, I beg your pardon? Livia was right. We're in the underworld. Oh my. That is quite a lot to take in. You'll have to give me a moment. Let's see. If that is indeed the case, I suppose we'd better figure out what to do about it, hadn't we? We don't have much to go on, except the old stories. I remember four in particular about heroes in the underworld. Hercules, the demigod and son of Jupiter. Orpheus, a Thracian poet. Sisyphus, a king of Ephyra. And Aeneas, a Trojan hero. Hercules was able to leave the underworld because he cowed its god with his strength. Sisyphus and Orpheus both relied on their wits instead. They persuaded the goddess of the underworld, Proserpina, to help them escape. Okay. And finally, Aeneas was able to escape with the help of a spirit guide who led him through a secret gate. So it seems you have two options. One of the things that we can do here the, the underworld head on or find a way to escape with the help of Proserpina or some other guide. We there's a thing that we get to There's like a task that we get that we go and listen to the statues. As I mentioned both Orpheus and Sisyphus were said to have persuaded Proserpina to help them escape, and Aeneas was guided to the exit. The problem is, those are the stories of a poet, a self-aggrandizing king, and a brawler about their own heroic deeds, so they should be taken with a grain of salt. First, Proserpina. What we do know about her is, well, it's a grim tale. Yes. It's said. We've been through this, so she might be willing to work against him to help us? If the stories are true, then I suppose so. The problem is, how do we communicate with her without being noticed by her captor? Leaving that aside for a moment, there is also the possibility of a spirit guide. I don't suppose you've come across one of those in your travels? I hear the statues whisper to me. You're only bringing this up now. Then again, I suppose you were worried I'd think you were as mad as Navia. Can you tell me more? Is it the same voice? What kinds of thing does it say? It's always the same voice, and she's helpful, if a little cryptic. Fascinating. Perhaps she's a benevolent spirit. Or perhaps... Hmm. Perhaps you're hearing the voice of Proserpina herself. If she has indeed been abducted, it would make sense for her to speak in cryptic whispers to avoid detection. Tell me, has she told you anything that might lead you to the way out? 
Uh, perhaps. She said, weighed against the current, whatever that means. That is strange. There are no rivers here. Hmm. Let me think on that. Perhaps I need to get into the upper cistern. Or I was really hoping you could tell me what that meant. Uh, perhaps I need to get into the upper cistern. Right. Because the current flows into the city through the aqueduct and into the upper cistern. I vaguely recall wondering what was in there, but the door at the back of the great temple is locked up tight. You might be able to get a key from the magistrate, but mm. if that doesn't work, perhaps you can find another way in. Let me know if you find anything in there. I'd better get back to it. Guide you. Although you may not need her with Proserpina on your side. All right. Um, who else can we go talk to before we reset? All right, we still have to figure out where the Greek tablet is. We haven't figured out how to get Malleus, uh, Maleos out of the running. we can do we can go to that other shrine where is that little shrine oh we could talk to the baker too where's the baker's shop Let's go down here. That'll help. Because we already spoke to this guy before, but we didn't have anything to really talk to him about. So maybe we can talk to him about the Egyptian tablet before everything resets again. Come and join me by the fire. Welcome, welcome. May I ask your name? I'm Cherny. It's a sincere pleasure to meet you. Tell me, what brings you all the way down here? I'm looking for a plaque that was removed from the obelisk. I'm looking for Kabash. I'd rather not say. Um, let's start with looking for Kabash, who apparently went missing. Ah, Kabash. Oh, Kabash. I know this man. He came through here some weeks ago. I will tell you everything I know, but first, a request. 
I have been living down here alone for many years, with nobody to talk to but myself. The one thing I long for above all else before I die is a good philosophical argument with somebody astute. I'm hoping that person is you. Let us find out with this simple question. Have you deduced the name of the god responsible for the golden rule? Pluto, god of the underworld. Excellent. I see you are indeed quite astute. Very few come to that realization before their time in the sun is over. Now, will you join me in a friendly Socratic dialogue? <laughs> Sounds easy enough. I'll, if I have to, I'll pass. Uh, sounds easy enough. Wonderful. Then let me begin with a question. Would you say you know the difference between right and wrong? Uh, yes. I'm not sure. It's a complex question. It's not something I often think about. Um... I'm not sure. It's a complex question. You are an overthinker too. We're the same then. <laughs> That's probably why I became a philosopher. I'm getting but called if you out by this with game. Right and wrong normally, then down here with the golden rule, surely your struggle can only have become more difficult. It is. Well, that's reassuring. And the truth is, you're not alone. You see, out there in the world, being uncertain about right and wrong was acceptable because our mistakes rarely had consequences. So we would tell lies and bend rules and turn a blind eye and rationalize, and yet still find a way to think of ourselves as good people. But under the golden rule, morality matters. The slightest wrongdoing could result in a mass execution. So to navigate this maze, we would have to be certain about the difference between right and wrong. Wouldn't you agree? Whose version of right and wrong? That is an excellent question, and it leads directly to my next line of inquiry. So let me ask you this. Is there one system of morality which is always perfectly correct, which you could follow in every situation and always do the right thing? Yes, there's more than one. Or no, I don't think so. I certainly don't think that there's only one. I think it's impossible to not make an error. Like, even if you have the best possible... Yeah, even if you had the best possible guiding morality, it's impossible to not make an error, right? So, I don't think so. Are you sure? Or is it possible that humans simply haven't figured out the right system yet? Uh, I think there's no such thing as a correct morality. Yeah. So is it up to each of us to decide what right and wrong mean to us individually? Or must we simply follow the laws and customs of whichever community we're in? Those seem mutually exclusive. I think we need to decide for ourselves, or rather not tied to one another. Yeah, it's a mix of the two. Um... Although, part of deciding for yourself is deciding whether or not you follow the laws and customs of the community. I think it's imperative to decide for yourself. Since we only have the two options, decide with the community, yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. This is this is to this is the fend for yourselves option. This is the betterment of the whole option. 
These absolutes are not great. Yeah. Uh, so yes, I like your argument, though, of using the community option here. Ah, you know, I think you'd find an ally in Herodotus, a scribe from among my people who lived some 400 years ago. He told the story of a man named Darius, whose curiosity was piqued when he learned that a certain tribe had the practice of eating their dead. He asked some Greeks who burnt their dead, what would it take for you to eat your dead? Aghast, they replied, nothing. Then he asked the tribe who ate their dead, what would it take for you to burn your dead? Nothing, they replied, equally aghast. From this, Herodotus concluded that custom is king, that right and wrong are merely local ideas which do not survive the journey from one tribe to another. I take it you're in agreement? I think that's a reasonable assumption at this point. Then let me ask you this. If you visited a tribe where they ate each other, copulated with the dead and drank wine from cups made out of human skulls, would you still maintain that within such a tribe there is nothing wrong with such conduct? Very difficult. Very difficult. Because I think for many people, that's a very foreign concept. However, I could also argue that the reason that I might have issues of sensibility with that is that I still carry the customs of my tribe and might acclimate to a new tribe. You know, because we do acclimate to a new tribe when we spend more time with one group of people or other group of, groups of people. Yeah, why is it right for them? And he's, he's asking us this, like, shocking question to press our beliefs, right? But, like, we do this all the time. You know, if you, for example, if you have a long career of school, like I did, and you spend time with friends in elementary school, and then you spend time with friends in high school, but oftentimes they can be different friends, and then you go to college and you spend time with completely different friends than you did in high school, and you might entirely move away from the friends that you had in high school and elementary school, and then you move on beyond college and you either continue on with more schooling or go work at a job and you gain new friends and different friend groups in, in that situation. And each time, each time you change your friend group, your community group, your tribe, you change your actions. The, the customs of those friend groups, of those social groups, are going to be different. They might have similarities and you might share beliefs, but you become part of that new community and that new tribe. And that's not to say that, like, if given extreme circumstances, like the ones that he's providing here for shock value, like, if you spent enough time with that new tribe and that was their custom, it's quite possible that you would get used to it and acclimate to it. If for some reason you couldn't go back to your old customs. Hmm. Disturbing. And while I do not agree with you, at least you would have the support of Herodotus. Wait, I want to change my answer. What is your point? My point is this. I don't think anyone alive truly knows any hard and fast rules about right and wrong. I agree. If there is one thing I have observed about rules, it is that virtuous people do not need them, and evil people will always find a way around them. The rules are meaningless. And so we must accept our limitations, and the sad truth that no human society will ever achieve the utopia for which it strives. In mathematics, we would call it an asymptote, a line that can be approached but never reached. 
Because the only way to create a utopia is with the ever-present threat of force, such as the Golden Rule. This and no other is the root from which a tyrant springs when he first appears as a protector. And life under tyranny is no utopia at all. Uh, I agree. Sure, why not? I'm not sure about that. I think you're wrong. I agree. Life under tyranny is no utopia. Oh, hi, Greek Chorus! We found you! We sure I'm did. glad to hear that. In any case, thank you for humoring an old man. I would be happy to answer your questions. Excellent. 